The video you are about to see was extracted directly from BIM After Dark Volume 2. To see more, head on over to BIMAfterDark.com and select Volume 2. Now that we've got our floor plans pretty good, we've got our reflected ceiling plans to a good point, I want to talk a little bit about roof plans. And one of the major questions I get when it comes to Revit roof plans is how to do flat roofs. And so there's a couple different types of flat roofs. There's ones that are actually sloped, so the steel is sloped, but, um, but less than a certain percentage they consider it a flat roof. And the other one would be if the steel is flat and the insulation is sloped. So I just want to show you how to create both of those really quickly and how that affects your documentation. For the most part, roof plans are a lot of notes, a lot of plan notes, and a lot of annotation. But as you can see here, I'm going to go to my AFP03 roof. And I'm going to use this roof as the example. So this would be the highest uh, generic roof above the two-story volume. So that would be right here. So we're going to use this roof as an example. So the first one I'm going to show you is if the steel was sloping. So right now, if we look at this roof makeup, it's actually just a 36-inch generic roof. Again, for the sake of my presentation, that's all I needed. Now I'm actually going to turn this into a roof construction, and we're going to show you how you can slope the roof itself. So let's say that the steel is actually sloping down to the middle where there's going to be some roof drains. So first thing I need to do is create my actual roof type. So I just tabbed around and selected my roof. I'm going to go to edit type. I'm going to duplicate it. And I'm going to call this one steel. Let's call it five and a half inch. No, we'll call it we'll call it metal roof deck with insulation. Again, I don't know what what you want to call yours, but so now the the structure we're going to change the material right away. We're going to change it to metal deck. So metal decking. Now I'm going to change the thickness of this to something like maybe two and a half inch metal deck. And now just like our walls, we're going to insert some layers here, and I'm going to go up with them. So we're going to insert the layers, and we're going to have, let's say we're going to have a, a single ply PVC roof. So we're going to need some insulation first. So what you always want to do is start with what you think your minimum insulation is going to be. So we're going to say here that it's going to be four and a half inches. Depending on where you are, you know, that changes. And we're going to call that rigid insulation. So I'm just changing the material to rigid insulation. Then we're going to have our cover board, whatever that ends up being. I'm going to use gypsum for the sake of the R value. Gypsum wall board. And we're going to make that 3 quarter inch. And so this is going to be our thermal layer. Here we can call it a finish, even though it could consider, be considered a substrate. But we're going to call it a finish. And then we're going to put one more finish on it. I'm going to call that finish 2. And this is going to be our EPDM or a PVC or whatever it ends up being. So I'm going to use EPDM. For now, just for the plastic content. And I'm going to give that something like you can be you know very precise if you want. If it's like 40 mil, 60 mil, you can actually make the exact. I'm just going to call it 1 16th of an inch. So now you can see we have our roof makeup here. Perfect. Now I'm going to click OK. And first I want to check in section to see what it did as far as the height of that roof. So you can see it actually sunk that roof down pretty low. So my assumption would be that it actually, there we go, negative 3. So we don't want to go negative 3. We wanted this roof to be a little bit higher. So we'll just pull it up a little bit. It's yelling at me for some walls that are probably, yeah, oh, the ceilings that are actually attached to it. So we're going to unjoin those because they're not touching anymore. So I want this roof between the ceiling and the roof, let's say we need something like 14 inches of structure, maybe. I don't know, something like that. And then we'll give it a little bit more. So we'll just say, we'll say negative one foot six from the, the roof level. So that's just going to be where our roof is. Now if we go to 3D, you'll see it looks fine. It looks just like it did before, but now we've got a void there. So now what we want to do is we want this roof to slope into the middle and now with this option we're gonna say this steel sloping it's a little impractical with the with the size of it they would probably be sloping in one direction but 
I just want to use this as our example. So what you can easily do is you can go to Edit Footprint. You can select all sides. And we can say they define the slope. Now the slope, if we select it, is set to 30 degrees. Now you typically want that 1 over 12 or some kind of 12 number. So we're going to change the project units because for some reason they're not set. So I'm going to type UN on my keyboard, which pulls up right here. And then you can see where it says slope. If I select that, it's set to decimal degrees. We don't want that. We want a ratio or rise over 12 inches, let's say. And we could do a little better than half inch, but we'll do eighth inch. And I'm going to click OK. Now when I select this, you can see I've got six and crazy numbers to over 12. So we want this to be, let's say, quarter inch. But we're actually sloping down, so we're going to say negative quarter inch. And now we're going to do that for the other three. So I'm going to select here, and I'm going to change this to negative quarter inch over 12 and click Apply. Now if I click Finish, you can see right away our roof is actually sloping down. If I go into my section, you can see there my roof is sloping down. And in 3D as well, it's sloping down. So that's pretty cool. And then we can put our crickets and our, our roof drains right in the middle there. The nice thing about using the model elements instead of just like model lines and actually creating the roof correctly is if we go to annotate, we can do a spot slope, and you can see it, it automatically finds our quarter inch, which is great. So now this is actually a smart tag that has to do with your model itself. So if you update the model, if for some reason it went to half inch, so I select this and I say this is going to go negative one half inch and click apply, all of those tags updated to a half inch. So I highly suggest building roofs correctly. It's not always the easiest thing, but definitely beneficial. So now let's say that the steel itself is flat and we want to slope the insulation. So what I'm going to do is go to Edit Footprint and I'm going to make this back to a flat roof. So I'm going to select all the boundaries. I'm going to uncheck Define Slope and click Finish. Now if I go to my section, you can see it's a nice flat roof. So now what we want to do is we want to start here and we want to slope the insulation towards the edges to create the same roof we had before. So to do that, we need to set some variables within the roof. So I'm going to select my roof. I'm going to go to Edit Type. And I'm going to go to Edit Structure. Now, you can see there's a little checkbox called Variables. So what we want to be a variable is we want the thermal air layer, which is our rigid insulation, the gypsum wallboard, and the roofing EPDM. Right, so we want those to move. So I'm going to start with the thermal air because everything else is above it. So now this is our quote unquote variable. So I'm going to select my rigid insulation as a variable and click OK. Now I'm going to go back to my roof plan. I'm going to select my roof. And what we're going to do this time is we're going to do modify sub elements. So this allows you to create some custom stuff within the, the roof itself. And actually, if I hold it over, you can see the video is actually doing exactly that. So I'm going to click modify sub elements. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a point or a line, depending on how we want to do it. We'll do a split line for this. Somewhere in the middle. Right now we don't have to be perfect. We can make it perfect later. So I just pressed escape by accident. Let me select this again. So if I go to modify sub elements, you can see I drew this line here. And that line, if you notice, is at 0 feet 0 inches. So that's great. We want that to be at 0 feet 0 inches. What we don't want is we want the edges to be something different. So if I go to Modify Sub-Elements and I select these four corners and I change their elevation to something that I already know to make it correct. So I don't know this off the top of my head, but I'm just going to assume something first. I'm going to say six inches and I'm going to press Enter. Now you notice what happened is our roof actually created the same shape we did before. But if I go to my section, Look at that. The roof itself is staying flat, but the insulation is sloping with it. So now if you know the math, it's pretty easy, quarter inch or half inch per, put, per foot, you can make this correct. Let me go to 3D now to show you. And then I'll go to the wall section as well so you can see a little bit more detail. So if I go to the wall section, see that? Pretty cool. And just like before, if I go to annotate, spot slope, and I hit it, you can see Here's our slope. It's 5 eighths. So I didn't do the math very well there, but you get the idea. So that's how you can quickly create 
roof plans that are correct and can be taggable. So again, I can tag it just like I did before. To show you how powerful the Modify Sub Elements tool can be, I want to show you how to make roof crickets. What I showed you before was to leave the decking and make the insulation slope by using Modify Sub Elements. So if I go into the section, you can see there, we've got a nice flat steel deck and the insulation slopes. If I change this to fine, you can see, there we go, the insulation sloping. So now what I've done is I put some roof drains on it, and now we want to make our crickets in between. So there's a couple methods you can use to create crickets, depending on how complex the roof is. Um, this one is pretty cool, especially for a simple roof like this. So if I select my roof, and I go to Modify Sub-Elements, you can see I have my one line, which we talked about before, which is set at zero. So I'm just going to add a couple points. So I'm going to add a point in the middle of each of these rainwater leaders or drains, whatever you want to call them. And then I'm going to add a point in between the drains, so at the midpoint of each of these lines. So if I look around, there we go, we got the midpoint. If I could do snap override, I could hit midpoints only. So we hit a midpoint there. We want to hit the midpoint of this line. And we want to hit the midpoint of this line. So there we go, we got a bunch of points there. Now what we're going to do is we're going to draw a couple points where the end of the cricket will be. So right now I'm just going to assume it. You can do the math or figure it out. But um, we're going to say somewhere around here. And let me just actually check that measurement. So if we go in, go to Modify Sub-Elements, I can dimension. Let's hit a reference plane. Let's, let, let's, let's put a reference plane down and make our lives a little easier. Make sure everything's on, on point here. So we're going to go, let's say we go four feet to one side, and I'm going to mirror that over. So we have a reference plane that's at four feet. Now I'm going to go to modify sub-elements. I just want to make sure, I'll delete that circle first. Now I'm going to add a point on that four feet line in line with this dot. I'm going to do the same on this side. Now I'm going to do the same here, and I'm going to do the same here. Oops, I keep pressing escape, sorry. So now if I select it, I go back to modify sub elements, I have all these points. If I select this middle point, you can see its elevation is zero. Well, it's gonna be more. So let's say that's 4.5 inches. And watch what happens when I press enter. There we go, we've got roof crickets. Now isn't that neat? So let me press escape here. Let me go into 3D zoom in you can see we've actually got our roof crickets now I just guessed four and a half inches um, let me go to annotate and do slope and see what's at so you can see it's actually at a three-quarter inch per foot slope so now because we know that and let's say we want that to be a different slope we can simply change that top piece so if I do modify sub elements I can simply change this from four and a half to let's just say three and a half inches press enter and then get out of it and you can see we've got a half inch per foot and we can now we can actually hit these with spot slopes we can change the way they look if we want whatever we want to do there which is great and three-dimensionally it's all happening so if I was to take my section and cut through the middle of this pyramid you can see we've actually got the exact thing so that's one way you can use the modify sub elements to create some really really neat stuff so I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna add some more detail this roof plan before we move on.